Even when I don't see your work, even when I don't feel your work, and you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even, Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. You're still working in my life. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. 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 You never stop.
We're so excited about what God has been doing at Eastview. We are challenged by the times and the circumstances. We realize that things are a little different, but we don't believe it's a time for the church to just simply back down. We believe it's time for the church to have revival. And tonight, I am so thankful that God has sent us an evangelist that I believe is going to speak straight to the heart of Eastview and all the others that would join us in this great evangelistic revival service right now. God bless you as you listen to our evangelist, Brother Greg Randall. Greeting in the wonderful and lovely name of Jesus. It is again my privilege and honor to uh, be able to minister to you via the web. I, uh, I'm looking forward to being able to come next year and uh, be in person and uh, just tell you in advance I uh, appreciate your prayers from a wife and uh, uh, just, just appreciate more now, I guess, the, uh, the friendships and uh, the acquaintances we have been privileged to make through the last 11 and a half years evangelizing. And so uh, we love you all, love Eastview, love your pastor and his wife, appreciate them, uh, great Christians, and I know you are very appreciative of them. And I'm, I'm sure and I pray that you're lifting them up in prayer, uh, not just in this situation, and, uh, but, but every day, because uh, not only are they deserving of our prayers, uh, but... Uh, that's who we get our guidance from, and we want God's hand of protection and, and his uh, mind of direction through our pastor. I, I draw your attention to Genesis chapter 42. Uh, Joseph had been sold into slavery, tricked his brothers, or the brothers had tricked Jacob, uh, thinking he is dead. There's a famine in the land, and Jacob has sent the sons down to get provision and uh, Joseph recognizes his brothers. And uh, many of you know the story, but uh, they kept one back, Simeon, and said, now I want you to go back, and if you're not spies, I want you to bring your youngest here and prove to me that, that you're not spies. And in Genesis 42, verse number 36, yes. And Jacob, their father, said unto them, me have you bereaved of my children. Joseph is not. Simeon is not. And you're going to take Benjamin away? And then he makes this statement. All these things are against me. I, I believe you could probably say that Jacob is feeling somewhat beat up at this point. But Romans chapter 8 Verse number 28 says, And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I believe we all at times have felt a little bit uh, in that place as Jacob felt somewhat that things were against us and feeling a little bit beat up. But my message to you today is, are we going to be beat up or are we going to be upbeat? Debbie had a lot of whys. She had been conceived in the womb of a frightened, unmarried girl who, fearful of her parents, had traveled to Los Angeles to give birth to her to do so in secret, and then to place her in and up for adoption. A Jewish family had adopted Debbie, but at seven months she was paralyzed by polio. Her adopted parents placed her in a series of hospitals and institutions and finally relinquished her to the courts, feeling unable to care for a quadriplegic child. Therefore, Debbie's childhood was spent in hospitals 
and numerous institutions. The same held true for her teen years outside of a brief stay in, in a few foster homes. Growing bitter was her lot. It seemed like she was continually beat up or beat down. She eventually was able to move into her own apartment, hired a live-in attendant, and enrolled into college. For the first time in Debbie's life, she began to make friends outside of a hospital. Among them was Alice Johnson. Debbie recalls, I spent a great deal of time asking her questions because Alice was a Christian. And as she talked about her relationship with Jesus, I, I, I wanted to know him as well. The greatest question she had had always been the whys. Why my disability? Why my family loss? Why did they give me up for adoption? Alice begins reading John chapter 9, verse 3. When Jesus said of the blind man that neither he nor his parents sinned. In other words, they were not at fault. But the works of God should be revealed in him. Debbie said, I was thrilled at that moment to learn that my circumstance were not punishments for anything that I or my parents had done, but that God had allowed these things to enter my life to bring him self-glory. Now I want to pause here just a minute before I finish the story. I, I do believe there are some sins and some blood that are crying out yet from way, way, way back as I preached the other night. I also want you to understand that we need to know that God is not against us. God is not coming against the church. This is the church that he sent his son to bleed and to die for. He's here uh, and, and wanting to change this world, what, wanting to get our attention. And so I want you to understand that the, uh, I, I just believe the church is being awakened. I, I don't believe it's because of the sins of the church but I believe it's because of the, uh, the commonplace of the church that we have entered into an hour of unprecedented stories that are gripping America and the world with fear. But Debbie, was her, her lot thought maybe something bad was upon her as a curse, and, and that was not the situation. Debbie became excited about the possibility of Jesus coming into her life and being exalted to others through her weakness. My point is, I believe that Jesus is going to be exalted through all of this when the dust clears. So when Alice invited Debbie to go to her small but anointed apostolic church, she went. And on December the 6th, 1970, God filled her with the baptism of the Holy Ghost as with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, and she was baptized in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And as she began to look back upon her life, she seen how God had taken what appeared to be negative circumstances and made something beautiful out of them. The difference between it or not, or let me rephrase that, the difference between making it or not is where you put the up. We can be beat up or we can be upbeat. I want to tell you that we have not been given a, spe a spirit of fear, but of power. We got to understand something that even today in the midst of this pandemic that's going on and all the situations, I, I, I'm not going to dwell there today. I want you to understand that we as the church of the living God are choosing 
Somebody help me right now. We're choosing to be upbeat. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I know that you feel the power of the Holy Ghost there in your living rooms today. I am not feeling beat up. I do not feel cursed. I believe we're in a challenging time. But God, hallelujah, created this universe. And he knows the end from the beginning. So somebody help me right now understand just because that, that, that we feel sometimes we're beat up. We do not have to carry that. We need to get, oh, I believe it was David said, uh, I, I encouraged myself. Problems that come in life, Jacob's was, he had lost one son. Another is now accused of espionage and was imprisoned. Now his Beloved Benjamin was in danger. Seemed like problems were multiplying. I want you to understand something, folks. I, I, if I did not say that, let me say this. The darker this circumstance gets, the brighter our light is going to shine to our families and to our neighbors, to our co-workers, and to the city of Lufkin. I want you to understand something. Problems may be multiplying, but I'm not going to fixate on the problem. I'm going to, I'm going to lift up the problem solver. He is still the great and the mighty, and his name is Jesus. Somebody shout out that name right now. Somebody go ahead and just lift your hands and your voices and begin to proclaim that precious name of Jesus. There was no wonder that Jacob of old was old, defeated, and made this powerful statement, all these things are against me. I believe his attitude was understandable. I, I, excuse me. I, I believe that uh, he had an understanding, knowledge of God, of God's power, but he underestimated it. Church, hear me. In this hour, when everybody around us is sinking in fear, we do not need to underestimate the power of God. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I feel the strength of the Holy Ghost. I feel that no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. And I today want to challenge us to not underestimate the power of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want you to understand I don't believe revival is ceasing. I believe revival is just beginning. I believe that we're about to see a move of the Holy Ghost that's going to change hearts and it's going to change life. Hallelujah. See, Jacob's problem was he was beat up when he should have been upbeat. Hallelujah. The, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Can I get a witness? Somebody hear me. To make a shadow, there has got to be the sun shining. And I believe today, right now, in this moment, the sun is shining and it's sun shining bright in in the midst of this very strong and serious time. Hallelujah. Joseph said, leave one of the brothers behind. Take food for the famine of your household and bring back your youngest brother. If you do so, these things you uh, have done will be forgiven, basically, and you'll be able to traffic in and out of the land. What looked like bad luck, bad situation, was just God positioning them for the miraculous. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, I, again, let me just pause here a minute and tell you, this is such a new thing to me to be able to sit at my dining room table and preach to somebody. But I am telling you, it has been just a, a presence of God that has been so real. So real in this, this last uh, several days here in my home. 
I believe, and I've said this to, to numerous pastors that I have talked to of late, I believe God is positioning the people for the miraculous. Hear me, folks. Turn to somebody and say, He's positioning us. He, he's positioning us. He's positioning Eastview for a great end time revival. I have always preached and I will continue to preach one Lord, one faith, one baptism. But I've also preached that miracle signs and wonders are going to be accomplished and I believe we're about to see miracles after miracles let me just tell you that I have a friend of mine Jason and I, I may have mentioned him or may not have mentioned him that had been the hospital and the other night he called me on the phone and he said I'm about to go crazy Greg he said I, I need you to pray for me and we begin to pray for Jason we begin to pray and, and, and I really feel that, that, that God begin to move not because of my prayer they've been praying all over the country for him but something began to happen uh, that very next night uh, Jason's fever broke uh, his attitude and his uh, 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 situation instead of feeling beat up uh, he, he began to feel a little bit upbeat he felt I feel my strength coming back uh, his wife texted us uh, and said Greg something has happened uh, there is a major change in Jason uh, the doctors come in and said I, I, we don't know what's going on they begin to run some blood tests uh, and all of a sudden within a 24 hour period uh, he did not have COVID-19. They could not explain how that his blood was so uh, so changed and drastically a, a, a miraculous touch. And they even went so far as to say, Jason, can we take some of your blood? We've, you've got a guy next door in his early 40s and, and he's dying. It's, it's nothing we've done has worked. And could we use your blood to help him? Oh, can I get a witness? The blood will never lose its power. Get ready for the miraculous. Get ready for the supernatural. Get ready. The blood will never lose its power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, 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 I could preach about the widow and Elijah, how that the situation, there was no more, just enough meal and enough uh, in, in the barrel, a little bit of oil left to make that last cake. And Elijah said, hey, <laughs> bake that first cake for me. I, I believe when she made that statement, she was probably being just a little bit beat up. I, I believe that Abraham could have been just a little bit beat up when he was uh, tying his son, his only son Isaac, to that altar. The prodigal son woke up from being beat up. Hello? Huh? And said, hey, even the servants in my father's house have, have plenty to eat. And and, and, and and clothes upon their back. What are you saying? And what I'm trying to tell somebody right now in the Holy Ghost, you hear me. The widow could have been beat up. Abraham could have been beat up. And and yes, in certain terms, the prodigal son had allowed himself to be beat up by the sins of the world. But the prodigal son came to himself. The widow listened to the voice of God. And Abraham, or listen to the uh, the man of God, and Abraham listened to the voice of God. And because of that, they were not beat. They become upbeat in their situation. I've come to tell somebody, hallelujah, in the power of the Holy Ghost, we need to be upbeat today because this is not the end. Hallelujah. One of these days, the trumpet is going to sound, and we are going to be called out of here to meet him in the air. But until then, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to get up. I'm not going to shut up, but I'm going to keep talking up the wonderful name, the glorious name, the mighty name. Somebody shout that name, Jesus. Oh, how I love that name. While you're clapping your hands and lifting your voices right now, hallelujah, let's do it together and believe that we're destined for the great outpouring of His Spirit. Hallelujah. I, I want you to understand mankind, the Bible said, born in sin, shaping in iniquity. Man, under the law, God, God's perfect creation, by the way, gave in to temptations. 
Because of the wall of sin between creation and the Creator, man needed a direct avenue to the throne of God. The supreme sacrifice. Satan has been working overtime uh, to intimidate. He was that, that serpent in the garden lying in 1 Peter, uh, dragon in the book of Revelations. <laughs> Thou shalt tread upon the lion is what Psalms 91 and 13 said, and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. It's given specific instructions Thou shalt trample. That word trample means to walk abusively upon. What I think we need to do on this Sunday is we need to make up in our mind that we're not going to let that rest in our mind of what's going on around us as far as this pandemic. But what we're going to do is we're going to take these circumstances and situations and we're going to put them under our feet. And we're going to allow the presence and the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost to change hearts and change lives. See, I'm not going to focus in on everything that, that, that's wrong. I'm going to focus in on what's still right. I'm going to focus in that my God is yet a healer. He, 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 he healed Jason. He's already home. They dismissed him from the hospital. Said, There's no sense in you staying here. He, he texted me and he said, bro, I, I can't wait to give you a big hug because I can hug. I can do more than a, 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 a fist bump. He said, God, change. he saved me in this hospital. And I'm here to tell you folks, God can still save, not only in the healing virtues, but he can save. And I'm telling you right now, listen to me. I, I, I never dreamed this would be a, 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 an avenue, but I'm telling you, if you're here today and you're watching with a friend or you're watching because you're connected with somebody in Eastview and you're a backslider or perhaps you've never been born again of the water and the spirit let me lead you let me explain to you the Bible said then Peter said unto them in Acts 2 and 38 repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy for this promise is unto you and your children, and all that are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. Yes, trials and circumstances and sins have maybe so come against you today, and, and, and sin has, has messed up your world, and you're feeling beat up and oppressed. I want you today to understand you can leave this day being upbeat. Because I'm telling you in the midst of all that's wrong. <laughs> Hallelujah. I still see what is right. And it's right lifting your hands. It's right clapping your hands. It's right, it's right giving a joyful noise unto the Lord. It's right saying, oh Jesus forgive me of my sins. Lord reach down and touch me today. And I want to become that new creature. As Paul described. I want to be. Born again of the water and of the Spirit. How do we do that? We repent, as Peter said. Because there is no other saving gospel. There is none other name. There is no other way. To be baptized, you must be born, uh, baptized in the name. Somebody shout that name right now. Hallelujah. It's not in the titles of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. There are titles. I am a father. I am a son. But my name is Greg. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness? So he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. And what happens when you're baptized? Those sins are washed away. The blood is applied to your life. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And again, let me just tell you, I am not beat up today. Do I have problems? Yes. I have circumstances that's going on? Yes. Do I have answers that have not come yet? Yes. But I am not beat up. For if God be for me. Hallelujah. So sicknesses come, frustrations come, trials come, disappointments come, sin 
Sin. Sin is running rampant. Don't give up. There is hope. You may not be able to sit next to individuals in the church like we're normally used to doing. But it will not stop His presence. His presence supersedes buildings. It, it moves through cities. I'm, I'm just telling you, the Lord is coming soon. I do believe these are related signs. Uh, I'm not going against anybody's teaching. Uh, you know, I, I just giving you my thought there. I believe these are related times right now. I, I believe they're they're a foreshadow or of things that are coming real quickly. And I and I believe things are coming real quickly. And uh, I, I told somebody one time. If the rapture of the church was 20 years down the road and you were not ready, he still come too early. He still come too quickly. But the Bible said he's coming in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. We're going to be caught out of here to meet him in the air. So let me close and tell you that God is doing miraculous things. I come to you today telling you I am not beat up huh i feel upbeat and so my message to you today my message to each of you is we are a people that are going to be upbeat we're, we're not being stupid walking around saying this is not real this is not happening this is this is just you know against this no 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 we're, we're going to be wise the bible said he that wins souls is wise we're going to be wise but we're not going to walk around with a gloomy look and a disappointing upon our, our face all in the mully grub saying, oh, I'm just so, you just don't know what I'm going through. No, 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 no. We are going to let our light shine by a smile on our face with a joy inside our heart, with a clap in our hands, with, with a voice that's, that's, that's shouting out, ha, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And somebody shout right now what his name is. His name is Jesus. So, so I'm, I'm telling you, if you're not born again, this is the day. This is the day to be born again. I promise you, pastor, will meet you at the church, baptize you in the name of Jesus or one of the ministers, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise is unto you. So the choice today is we can be beat up or we can be upbeat. Let's choose to be upbeat. God bless you and I love you.